Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. And now, Tider Insider TV. And good evening, everybody. Welcome into another edition of Tider Insider TV, presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock Bottling Company, alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. I'm Gary Harris. We've got a jam-packed show for you tonight. But first, we're going to pop the top on our Diet Pepsi Wild Cherry, courtesy of Buffalo Rock. There's the sound that I love, and then it's even better when it's going down. Very nice. Remember to pick up some Pepsi products the next time you're at your local grocer. Well, football season is over, technically, Rodney, but as you know, football season is never really over. At Alabama, we live it. We'll go live to Mobile for a look at this year's Senior Bowl. Jen Chapman is standing by for that. But first, we're only eight days away from National Signing Day, Rodney. We know what that means. Maybe the biggest day of the year for some football fans. We'll, of course, have our Tider Insider Signing day special live from the zone inside Bryant Denny Stadium at 3.30 on signing afternoon. But Alabama right now, Rod, is making its final recruiting push. And the Tide still has, depending on how you look at it, 8, 9, 10 slots open. Uh, we're going to talk about some position of need. And right now Alabama's trying to tie up some linebackers. What is the latest on the local product, Ben Davis from Gordo High School? Well, he visits Auburn this coming weekend. Of course, he was at Alabama this past weekend for the parade and that celebration. I, you know, I think... Uh, you know, he'll take his visit and announce at his school on signing day. I think Alabama is clearly the team to beat, uh, though he is not necessarily – he has named them the favorite, but he uh, has not committed, as we know. But he's certainly very highly recruited. Brian uh, Kelly from Notre Dame is supposed to come in this week, Gary, and, and see him. So he's drawing national attention. Whoever winds up signing Ben Davis, what type of football player will they be? Well, getting? he's an extremely athletic guy. I mean, when you look at him, that's why he's rated one of the top linebackers in the country because of his athletic ability. The guy is, uh, you know, has speed, and he has the bloodlines. I mean, his father was a tremendous linebacker at Alabama, the all-time leading tackler in Alabama football history. And what do they say, Gary? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, talent yeah, runs in the family. Another in-state linebacker that numerous schools are still pursuing, including Alabama, Lindell Mack Wilson from Carver High School in Montgomery. What's the latest with him? Well, and he's kind of playing it close to the vest. He's played coy. I think a lot of these guys really like to play games. They, they become difficult to read at times, and he's an outstanding player as well, one of the top linebackers. And he visits Florida this coming weekend. He's been naming them the leader, but I still think when all said and done, Mack Wilson will end up at Alabama. Good-looking prospect, as I said, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, a lot of schools still recruiting Mac Wilson. Over in Mississippi, Alabama's involved with a number of prospects. We're going to talk about a couple that Alabama, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and other schools are pursuing. A.J. Brown, the wide receiver from Starkville High School. Uh, I'm told that he reminds some of these recruiting uh, experts of Julio Jones just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I said that last spring, the first time I watched him. The guy's almost 6'2", he's 220 pounds. He can go up and get the ball. Great athlete. He's a guy that could go high in the Major League Baseball draft, right. Gary. That's how good of an athlete he is. There you see him going up, making a play like Julio, and he's an outstanding player. Now, look, I think A.J. Brown really favors Alabama. Certainly going to be difficult to get out of Starkville because there's going to be a lot of pressure to stay home. Miss Ole Miss is in it, too. That's where he visits this weekend. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But I do think Alabama's in good position at this point. Again, we're not trying to project where any of these young men are going. We're just pointing out some guys that Alabama and many others are recruiting. And also in Mississippi, uh, a really talented prospect is Jeffrey Simmons, the defensive end from Knoxville County High School there in Macon. Yeah, I think he is Jeffrey Simmons. Maybe, Gary, the best pure high school defensive end in the country right now. And I, I've thought that since last spring when I first saw his tape. Uh, there you see him. I mean, look at him. What a physical specimen for a guy who's only in high school. Uh, he already looks like a college player. He's got all the speed, the athletic ability, you know, can play the run, can rush the passer. Um, I think when you look at a defensive end, he's kind of how you draw him up. And like you said, Alabama, Ole Miss, certainly the top two. Some great footage of all those prospects right there you got to see. Uh, certainly it's a newsworthy situation now, right now, eight days from signing day. Alabama and many other schools trying to sign the young men that we talked about, but the Crimson Tide heavily involved with those four players and many more. Well, we're still a 
you know, period of waves from Avery Johnson, Ronnie, building his basketball team through recruiting, but he's working to do that. But the Alabama head coach right now is just working on building his current roster into a better team, trying to get them into a winner. Alabama's lost five of its first six SEC games, but only one of those losses was by double digits at home to Kentucky. And the players, despite the record, have reason for optimism. Regardless of us not maybe getting the end results we want, yeah. you know, they're still fighting all 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's encouraging because, you know, it's easy to just kind of get in that, uh, listen to what, you know, everybody else is talking or mm -hmm. might it be positive or negative and just kind of give up. But, I'm, you know, I'm proud of the guys, you know, just sticking with it. You know, we're getting better, you know, regardless of what the results might be showing. Um, you know, when I look back and look at the film, we are getting better and we are getting closer. And Rodney, Alabama will host Tennessee tonight at 8 o'clock at Coleman Coliseum on the SEC Network. Records are very similar. Tennessee's got a first-year head coach and Rick Barnes, so he's trying to rebuild a program there. Uh, again, I don't want to put a, pro a lot of pressure on Alabama because Avery Johnson's been clear. You know, you've got to stay the course regardless of the result. But this is a winnable game tonight for the Tide. Yeah, and I, I think certainly he's had his team ready every game. And, you know, watching that LSU game, Gary, I mean, look at how outmatched Alabama yeah. really was talent-wise. I think he did a fantastic job of keeping his team in the game, had a chance to win to the very end. So he's done an outstanding job of that. It would be interesting, as you said, this matchup between Barnes and Avery Johnson, both first-year coaches. You know what I love about him? No excuses ever, Rodney. You know, somebody asked him after LSU, you know, how disappointed it is to lose these close games. He said, well, you know what, we won our share too. You know, he remembered they barely beat Clemson. They barely beat Wichita State. They barely beat Notre Dame. He said, you know, during the course of the season, you're going to win your share and lose your share. You just have to keep playing hard and trying to win each game, playing a complete 40 minutes, and that's what they'll try to do tonight. Yeah, and, and again, I think uh, going back to the matchup with those coaches, Gary, I mean, Rick Barnes, he's been a fantastic coach. I mean, Tennessee did an outstanding yeah. job landing him from the University of Texas and Alabama with Avery Johnson. Those two guys are going to build – Really outstanding programs. Barnes, once an assistant to Wim Sanders, been mm -hmm. the head coach at George Mason, Providence, Clemson, Texas, and now Tennessee. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, a bittersweet anniversary for Alabama fans, plus a live look at the media day for the 67th Reese's Senior Bowl in Mobile. Our very own Jen Chapman is live with a member of this year's national championship team. You'll want to stay tuned for that. Plus, phone calls, emails, and tweets. We'll take them all. 205-348-WVOA-348-9882 is the number. You can email us, TITV at WVUA23.com, or you can reach out to us on Twitter using the hashtag TITV. We're back with more from Tuscaloosa and Mobile right after this. A bittersweet day for Alabama fans. Today marks the 33rd anniversary of the death of Coach Paul William Bryant, the Bear. Coach Bryant passed away following a heart attack on Wednesday afternoon, January 26, 1983, at Druid City Hospital in Tuscaloosa, now known as DCH. Rodney, he's gone, but he'll never be forgotten. Yeah, and I have a little bit of a different perspective on him, Gary, because I was an Alabama kid growing up in South Texas, and I tell you what, it was really difficult, but Alabama winning football games back in the 70s sure made it a lot easier. And You know, Bear Bryant certainly is the standard by which all coaches will always be measured. Absolutely. He is one of a kind. And, uh, again, Coach Saban's incredible, but there's only one Coach Bryant. We know that and uh, still remember him fondly, not all, only in Alabama, but all over the United States. Okay, a week from Saturday is the uh, – or actually a week – this Saturday, in fact, is the 67th annual Senior Bowl at Ladd Peebles Stadium in Mobile. Five Alabama seniors are on the roster, and today those five seniors met with the media. But right now, our very own Jen Chapman is live with the quarterback of the national champions, Jake Coker. Jen? We are here in the hometown of Jake Coker, Mobile, Alabama. He's fresh off a national championship title undefeated as a starting quarterback for Alabama. And now you're back here where it all started. What's it like to play in the Reese's Senior Bowl here in Mobile? Uh, it's pretty unbelievable. I uh, you know, grew up coming to these practices, coming to some games, and uh, you know, pulling for the Alabama guys down here. So to be able to join that and be a part of this uh, means a lot to me. And you know, I couldn't be more appreciative of the invite. Now the crowd seemed a little bit bigger today at practice. Do you think you have any effect on how many people are turning out to watch? I don't know. I just, uh, you know, I appreciate them coming out and, and uh, you know, supporting me and, and doing the things they do for me. It's, uh, it means a lot. 
What has this year been like for you? I know I've heard you make statements like this has been the most fun playing football or this is a dream come true. Does that really sum up what this year is for you? Yeah, man, it's definitely been the most fun I've ever had. Uh, it's something that I'll never forget. And just the, uh, the coaches, you know, Coach Saban, what he's done for me and the way he's, you know, helped me you know, get where I am right now and, and just the opportunity he gave me means the world to me. And, and those guys, man, they uh, – you know, from beginning to end, they had my back, and and so uh, that you know that means that means so much to me that they would, you know, uh, support me through through and through just the whole time. It's a uh, it's an unbelievable team. And now a chance to show NFL scouts what you can do. What do you hope they see this week? Uh, you know, guy, just a guy that can compete and play at the next level. I, uh, you know, I don't I try not to think about you know all that too much, just because. I think, uh, is, you know, once you start thinking about what you need to do, all those other things, you stop thinking about just having fun and playing football. So that's going to be my biggest thing, just go out there and have fun. Now, A.J. McCarron was out here today. What conversations have you two had? Has he given you any advice moving forward? Uh, you know, I hadn't talked to him too much. Uh, you know, I think he's been – he's had his own, you know, business to take care of, especially lately. Uh, and I know he just got back to town, so I'll have to talk to him here pretty soon. <laughs> Now Alabama will have to name a new starter next year. What advice do you have for those quarterbacks? Uh, just keep playing. Uh, you know, <laughs> to be honest with you, after all the competitions I've been through, uh, that's probably the last thing I want to think about. It's another college college competition. So, uh, you know, I just hope those guys. They, uh, you know, that we got a bunch of great guys over there, and they're gonna get the job done. It's like any, you know, whenever you're Alabama, especially with the guys we have now, uh, they can all play and they'll get the job done. And real quick before we wrap up. Reggie told me to ask you about your secret skill. It might not really be a secret. You always say you're a country boy. Hunting. Is that your favorite thing to do? It's definitely, I mean, it's definitely up there. If I'm not, if I'm not out here playing football, then I'll either do that or be fishing or something. So maybe the NFL team that needs to find you is one that's good for hunting? I just, I just want to play football. So, you know, if I get that opportunity, that's all I want. That's a great answer. And, of course, we want to see him continue to keep playing. Thanks, Jake, for joining us. And Gary Rodney, there he is, the winning quarterback of the national championship team. Thank you, Jen. Great, great interview. I love, love Jake Co Coker's mentality. Never gets too high, never gets too low. Just a quick thought. I know it's not a developmental league anymore for quarterbacks, and he probably needs to be developed some. But uh, your thoughts on whether or not he'll make an NFL roster? Well, I mean, I think it's he's got a lot of tools, Gary. I mean, he, you don't find many guys six five and a half, two hundred and thirty seven 237 no, pounds that can throw the football like he can. And I think people underestimate his athletic ability yep. and his determination. I mean, what he overcome that, that overcame this year certainly was uh, very impressive. Well, we're all pulling for him because he's a great young man. And 14-0 and this year is a starter in a national championship. You can never take that away from him. All right, we got plenty more to come here on Tider Insider TV, including some Avery Johnson impersonations by the coach's own players. But up next, we're welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, there's the information on the screen, 205-348-WVUA, 348-9882. Phone lines are open now. And we'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tighter Insider TV will return right after this timeout. Welcome back, everybody, to Tighter Insider Television, presented by Buffalo Rock. Alongside Rodney Orr, the man with the plan, I'm just Gary Harris looking for the answers. And uh, you ready to take some phone calls? Sure. All right, let's go to the phone lines. And first up tonight is Joseph right here in Tuscaloosa. Welcome in, Joseph. How are you? Everything all good, man. What's, what's going on with y'all? Oh, Joe, what's up, partner? Hey, you know it's all, it's all good. Hanging around, I guess, hey, I'll teach you to talk more slang. You just hang around me a little bit. Nah, I will, brother. <laughs> I'll do it. Hey, what you got for us tonight? Yeah, but what's up, brother? Yeah, who's, who's going to coach the secondary now Mel Tucker's gone? Well, they got some options, Joe, and I'll, I'll let Rodney chime in. Jeremy Pruitt could coach it and, and be the defensive coordinator. I don't think they're really focused right now on, on hiring a coach for that opening uh, on the defensive side because they're trying to wrap up recruiting. But uh, as I said, some options there. Pruitt could coach linebackers or coach secondary. They could hire a linebackers coach. They could hire a secondary coach. Uh, I'm yep. sure, you know, they'll get that handled. That's what they could do. I thought Ben Davis made an interesting com comment after his visit. He said that he had sat down with Coach Pruitt and he expected Coach Pruitt to be his linebacker okay. coach. Now, again, that doesn't mean that's going to happen, but that was an interesting quote that he made. So, you know, and that's that's something that you remember. Kirby Smart yep. was a secondary coach, absolutely, and moved to linebacker. Linebackers. And Coach Saban made the comment that it was easier to kind of coordinate the defense yeah. from there. So maybe that's something that Jeremy Pruitt might do, although he has been a secondary coach. Well, one thing you know for sure, Joseph, is Alabama's going to get good coaches. I mean, if you're an assistant coach out there, 
This is kind of the mecca. If you can come coach at Alabama for Nick Saban, that is a resume builder. Let's go to Aniston. Talk to our main man, Harold. What's up, Harold? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, you know it. Hey, I called uh, Gary on uh, Crimson Cub for Friday, man. I thought he made a great point, man. Uh, Coach Avery Johnson needs to get him a big man up under that man, somebody that can rebound because the guys we got now are soft as tissue paper, man. <laughs> they're not getting it done uh, rebounding-wise. You know, Harold, they're, they're looking. First of all, he's got one sign. Braxton Key, originally from Nashville, now to prep school in Virginia, riding 6'8", 240. Uh, he's physical, uh, you know, I think height's a little overrated sometimes. It's about getting in there and, like we're talking about, being willing to bang and muscle. Uh, so 6'8 is plenty tall enough, in my opinion, but they're out looking for more. You know, they're out looking for junior college guys, high school guys. He wants to get better players in the post, not only for rebounding, but for scoring down on the low block. And, you know, one thing we know about Avery Johnson, Rodney, he may not be new to recruiting. But he is intense in recruiting. He's getting after it. He's going to get. Are there any Leon Douglases out there? I don't know. If there are many Leon around. They could sure use one. Heck, Leon could probably get in there and get some rebounds now. <laughs> Fifty something years old. Hey, thanks for the phone calls. We are going to take a time out. But I tell you what, still to come, there are plenty of Avery Johnson impersonations, and they're pretty much every player on the team trying to do it. You'll want to stay tuned for that. More phone calls and emails. The Phone lines are open right now, 205-348-9882. It is a beautiful night in Tuscaloosa other than the rain. Get the rain out of the way and it would be beautiful. It actually looks pretty good coming down there. We'll have more TITV right after this. Not one, not two, but three falls on the beam Friday night for the Alabama gymnastics team. Had to count two of them. The Tide uh, you, you know, couldn't overcome that. You take off the way the falls and they don't want easily against Arkansas. But they lost at home. First time ever in Arkansas after losing to the Razorbacks for the first time, period. Last year, this week, though, head coach Dana Duckworth expressed confidence in her ladies' ability to execute on the beam moving forward. They'll have to execute their number one ranked Florida on this Friday night. All right, let's go back to the phone lines, and let's talk with Doug over in Alexandria. Hey, Doug, welcome into the program. Hey, guys. How you doing? Very well. Oh, very good. Roll tight. Hey, just got a question for you. If B.J. Emmons does not qualify academically, are we in danger of not signing a running back, a running back in this class? Well, Doug, you know, we don't really talk much about academics. We have to let that play out. We don't know. Uh, I know this. I think Alabama's going to sign another running back regardless. Mm -hmm. Rodney, don't you? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'll answer his question this way. I think B.J. Emmons would be a freshman at Alabama next year. I think that's the best way I could answer that question. Um, and, yes, I think there's a chance they could sign another one. I think they're certainly – I know they're certainly recruiting some. Yeah, the, the way they use them around here, you, the more the merrier, that is for sure. Let's stay here in Tuscaloosa and talk to Sue. Sue, welcome into TITV. Hey, how are y'all? Very well. All right. I need to ask y'all a question. Is Cyrus Jones and Derrick Henry going to play in the Senior Bowl? And also, is are they going to have a new quarterback, uh, Jalen Hurts? Um, I was looking at his uh, – uh, record from uh, Channel View, Texas, and he is a good quarterback, so is it a possibility he could be Alabama's new quarterback? All right, Sue, let's take those one at a time. First of all, Cyrus Jones is playing in the Senior Bowl because he's one of the five seniors there. Derrick Henry, not eligible. Yes, he's going to the draft, but he is a true junior, so he's not eligible for the Senior Bowl, so we answered that one. On Jalen Hurts, yeah, he's going to be in the mix. Out of Texas, is already enrolled. In school, going to go through spring. I mean, it's a long shot to think that a true freshman could start at Alabama, but he will get his opportunity to yeah. battle for the job. Yeah, he's a great high school player. There's no question about that. Played for his father there. He's a coach's son. And uh, you know what? Coach's sons really kind of grasp things quickly. I think he did an outstanding job from all accounts in terms of his performance in the uh, – playoff practices that he went through with Alabama. And, again, I think when you look at Jalen Hurts, Gary, he brings a dimension that of the ability to run the football, but he is a passer first. And I really like Jalen Hurts. I think he is an outstanding talent. Yeah, he'll be there with Barnett, Cornwell, Bateman. They'll all be trying to get their hat in the ring come spring. All right, we got an email we're going to take, Rodney. And uh, this is in regards to the defensive line. What will the defensive line look like next year? That's from John. That's a good question. I mean, they're losing Sean Robinson, Jaron Reed, Darren Lake. Uh, but a lot of talent coming back, too. Well, Jonathan Allen was a huge. I mean, that's as big a recruit as you'll get. And they've got some other outstanding young players. We know about, you know, Darren P Deron Payne, who really had a r good freshman year. He's going to have to step up. I think i got to really watch out for, though, Gary. This is his time, his opportunity. He's got to be prepared. That's Josh Frazier. 
I think he's got a chance to really make be a force inside. He's going to be a junior now, so it'll be interesting to watch him. But they have some, certainly have some really talented players up front to, uh, I think, continue to be strong defensively. Been, been the key to this great run for yep. me, defensive line. Mm -hmm. Since Saban got here, they've had the best in the conference almost every year. All right, I told you a little earlier, Avery Johnson impersonations. We got them coming up from players on his own team. You don't want to miss it. Thanks for the phone calls, too, by the way, and the emails. We'll be back with more TITV. We'll wrap it up from Tuscaloosa right after this. We, we just went over this, son. Now, Junior, you want to play for us, you cannot get trapped. You can't get trapped at this level, Junior. Come on, Junior, come on. Hey, Jim, hey! Guys. You are student athletes. Now, Riley, I told you, you gotta run, Riley. You gotta run. You have to run to the corner. Test it, shoot the ball. <laughs> That's good stuff. But you know, Avery's one of those guys that he's unique because he's so unique in his voice and his expressions, facial expressions. He's really kind of hard to mimic. I mean, they, they did the best they could, those mm -hmm. players, I think. Chris Weber probably does the best. Have you ever seen Chris Weber do Avery Johnson? Mm. He does him really, really well. But, you know, those those young men love playing for Yeah, you ride. can tell that. There's absolutely. And we, we felt that all along, that he would be a guy that certainly the players yeah. would really feel comfortable with. 8 o'clock tonight, the tip-off between the Vols and the Tide at Coleman Coliseum. I'll have the highlights for you tonight at 10. Well, as always, our beautiful dress shirts tonight, courtesy of the Locker Room, located in downtown Tuscaloosa, uh, University of Alabama tradition since 1964, and the home of the original elephant wear. Now, you can shop in-store, obviously, or you can shop in online at Locker Room dot biz and you can go through the entire inventory now it's not just original elephant wear they've got an entire men's wear line and ladies wear line as well alex gatewood and the folks at the locker room they will make you look your best well that is going to do it for the program tonight a reminder that if you miss the show we'll have a replay tonight at 10 30 or you can catch it online anytime at wbua23.com so for rodney orr i'm gary harris thanks also to jen chapman tonight live with keith dobbins down in mobile that's going to do it for the program have a good evening everybody we'll see you next week again on tipv